Keep your hand on your gun Don't you trust anyone There's just one kind of man that you can trust That's a dead man Or a gringo like me Alright guys, so Today I'm going to do something a little bit different Uh... I don't know, just kind of thinking and just started moving things and moving out of Boulder forever um, and just kind of felt a little uh, like reminiscing and that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go check some stuff out, do a little commemorative tour of Boulder, Colorado and uh, yeah, and it, it should, might be cut weird so uh, enjoy, enjoy. So we're going to head to... Uh, the Hobbit Hole, which is what I called my first house after we moved out of the dorms. It was with two buddies of mine, uh, and it was a really good time. It was like the first time we were on our own, so that was exciting. Um, and then just living in this place was very interesting because it was... Uh, it wasn't the worst place I've lived for sure, but it also wasn't the best. So we're just going to do a little quick swing by. Oh, here it is. It's in all its glory. Yep. Oh, girls are living there. That's weird. Yep, there it is. Just the Hobbit Hole. And we would fucking hang out there, chill in the back. We're always grilling out back on a little grill that we took from Goodwill. Because we were really poor. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even buy it. We just found it in the back. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, had a lot of grills on that. Kind of just hung out, played video games, played a lot of Smash. Um, and SWAT. SWAT was the game of choice for sure. And over here we're going to come up on the girl's house. Holy shit, that thing is ugly as fuck. Oh my god, that's sick. Maybe it's not that bad. A fucking Technicolor Lexus. Oh, that's awesome. I need to get that in all its glory. Yeah, but this was the girl's house, which we hung out a lot at. They had all the parties. And then, uh, and this was like a block away from the Hobbit Hole. And, uh, then their neighbors were pretty good friends of ours after that. We met them there, and that's how that went. But we stole a baby pool from this yard, I think. Maybe this one on uh, Memorial Day at some point. We would uh, run the Boulder Boulder, which is this like 5K. And then uh, my friend and I proceeded to get obliterated that day. Um, so we stole a baby pool on the way home and used that for the rest of the summer. And that was great. And that home was amazing. So on the left, you'll see the best graveyard in Colorado, or in Boulder at least. Basically, it was really spooky. So you get drunk and come up here and you're like, ooh, spooky. But you don't go in there because that's kind of fucked up. Get off your goddamn phone. Are you on your phone or are you just fucking drunk? All right. So now we're heading to uh, my house uh, my junior year. And I don't know. This house is in such a great area. This is where I wanted to live pretty much my entire college career. Because it's not the hill. It's not loud. Like, I'm not going to pretend like I party more than I do. So, I kind of wanted to live over here. I just couldn't wait till everyone turned 21 and, like, it was an acceptable option. And, uh, yeah, it was a piece of shit. It was the biggest piece of shit I've ever lived in, for sure. We had, like, the most mice I've ever seen. Um, I think I've counted... I saw at least 10. At least in the 10s, maybe. Okay, at least 10. Maybe, like, 12. 12 sounds nice. I'm gonna sneak it. Sneak. <laughs> yeah. So we had mice in that house and it was disgusting. And they would get on the counters and there would be mouse poop on the counters. It was definitely the grossest place I've ever lived. And at some point it flooded because of the rain. <coughs> and the rain just came in and it soaked the carpets. And we didn't know. Like we knew, knew nothing about this. But behind the couch, we pulled the couch back, and there were mushrooms growing behind it. It was by far the scariest thing I've ever seen. 
because I was like living in that for a while and I had sat on that couch and I was wondering what that smell was. Grossest house there, but great roommates. <coughs> Didn't really know them starting out, so it was kind of odd. I knew one of the guys through physics, um, but turned out they were the chillest people I have ever roomed with. So I ended up doing it again the year after that. They were just so relaxed and not too passive aggressive. Like we would basically talk most of the things out um, and they didn't feel like there was too much tension hanging around. So I, I was into that. All right, so now we're passing Pearl Street Mall and this is basically where all the bars were. So you come by here, get drunk, you'd hit the downer first, then maybe if it was a good night at the downer, you'd, you'd uh, go straight to the pub, or not the pub, uh, Connor O'Neill's. And when you go there, then you try to steal cigarettes from people. That was the move, because um, there was a smoking patio out back. And then this side of Pearl is probably my favorite side of it, because it has all the coffee shops and the best place ever. Let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you what. So down here you got the coffee shops, and then you got this place called the Yellow Deli, okay? And you know how I, I'm into cults, you guys. So the Yellow Deli is run by the Seven Sisters Tribe, tw or Twelve Sisters Tribe? So, the Yellow Deli is run by a tribe. <laughs> um, I think it's called the Twelve Tribes, actually. Thank you, Matt, for letting me know that information. Um, but the people in there are out of this world. They dress up like they're Amish, kind of. Um, and I don't want to say creepy, but you know that like when people stare at you a little bit too long and like they don't know how eye contact is supposed to work, that's what the Yellow Deli is like. It's uncomfortable, but it's amazingly uncomfortable. Mine? Alright, so right here on the right you'll see the spot St. Julian, which is where I worked for a while. And then I just worked at the St. Julian itself. So prestigious. So nice. If you have the means, I definitely think you should check it out. Hey, if I had the money, I would definitely do that, you know? Go get yourself some nice rooms, some delicious food, uh, all the accoutrements that you need, and just uh, chill. Oh yeah, just get a slow-mo of me, just fucking hair waving in the wind and shit. Oh yeah. One of these houses we went to my freshman year, that was fun. I jumped into like four inches of snow, but there wasn't, it wasn't packed down or anything. So I basically just hit the ground because it was totally fresh. And I had no idea how snow worked, you know, from Texas. So you got to do what you got to do. You got to live and you got to learn. And that's the most important part to learning when you live is learning. Yeah, you heard it here first. Inspirational quotes from Spurs Cycles. Cause he knows what the fuck he's talking about, dude. Oh, come on, come on, let's go. Oh, yep, that dude's either excited or pissed. Probably excited. He's got a nice shirt on. I wear nice shirts and nice shirts only. Yeah, that's what we like to do. <coughs> I've got the black long pop. It's got a winch on the back. What do you do with that thing? That's fucking sick. I wanna know. I'm really goddamn curious now. If you're one of the 12 people who watch this video, let me know what you think down in the comments. <laughs> oh, it's a fender truck. I've never seen a fender truck before. Got my fender truck and my fucking uh, party haircut. You know, party in the back, but not in the front. And this is my old street, and I used to fucking haul it down here. Fucking horrible landlord Hank over there. Fuck you, Hank. You should die slowly. Oh, nice. This dude's got a Grom. But this was the party house. It was the sick, sick party house of our our college experience. Oh, they've got a sick flamingo now? And Christmas lights? God damn. No, but we would hang out here. Everybody, we would have parties all the time. That looks fucking horrible without the porch. Um, 
they would have parties, everyone would be chilling there. There was always somebody to hang out with because we had five people in the house. Sorry. Um, but it was really cool. It was a good place to be. A great place to live. Great time to be alive. So the reason I took you guys on this journey is just basically because, you know, this place meant a lot to me. It was where I spent four years of my life. Um, and it was pretty much, I think, the most crucial point in my life. Um, because I was at a point where I was be getting into myself, um, having to provide for myself, um, and also just kind of figuring out who I was, you know, trying to figure out what's important to me. And of course, we always still do that. That's a continuous process. But these four years were the heaviest where I was like, okay, I need to figure out what I want from my life and what I need to do to get to those points.